Welcome to part one of information theory. Most of us think of information in terms of computers, telephones and satellites. Information is also vital for communication between individuals and that information can be conveyed by speech or by touch or even smell. And the information in DNA must be decoded to specify which cells go where during the development of tadpoles into frogs and the development of all other organisms including birds, plants and humans. Information theory represents one of the few examples of a single theory creating an entirely new field of research. In this regard, information theory, which was invented in its entirety by Claude Shannon in the 1940s, ranks alongside the scientific theories of Darwin, Newton and Einstein. To get some idea of where we're heading, this is the defining equation for Shannon entropy. Don't worry, you're not expected to understand it yet, but you will understand it by the end of this pair of short presentations. So, let's make a start. Information is normally measured in bits. The word bit is derived from the words binary and digit. Because of this, most people think that a bit and a binary digit are the same. In fact, they are fundamentally different types of entities and you will have to unlearn the association between bits and binary digits if you are to understand information theory. The information conveyed by a binary digit depends on how probable it is, as shown here. To make this tangible, flip a coin and label a head as 1 and a tail as 0. In this graph, the probability of a head varies along the x-axis and the amount of information provided when the coin lands heads up varies along the vertical axis. If this is a fair coin, then the probability of a head is one half. So a head provides one bit and the same applies to a tail for this coin. Crucially, if two outcomes are equally probable, then each outcome provides one bit of information. So each time the coin is flipped, it provides one bit. An important fact that underpins information theory is that one bit allows you to choose between two equally probable alternatives. To explore this idea in more detail, imagine you get lost on your way home and that you arrive at a fork in the road marked as A here. If you have no prior information about which road to choose, then the fork at A represents two equally probable alternatives. If I tell you to go left, then you have received one bit of information. We can represent the instruction to turn left as the binary digit 0 and the instruction to turn right as the binary digit 1. Then instead of saying left I could just give you the digit 0. When you receive this digit you have received one bit of information. Now imagine that you drive on down the road and you come to another fork labelled as B here. Again because you have no idea which road to choose Another binary digit provides you with one bit of information. In this case, the binary digit is a 1, indicating that you should take the road on your right, which leads to the point marked C. Note that the two decisions you have made so far, one decision at A and one at B, will take you to C, and that C is one out of four destinations that you could have arrived at. In other words, just as one decision leads you to one out of two possible destinations, two decisions leads you to one out of four possible destinations. As before, because you have no idea which road to choose, another binary digit provides one bit of information allowing you to choose the correct road, which leads to the point marked D, which is your final destination. This is one out of eight possible destinations. In other words, just as one decision leads you to one out of two possible destinations, Two decisions lead you to one out of four possible destinations. Three decisions lead you to one out of eight possible destinations. Let's see if we can make this into a general equation. For one fork, the number of possible destinations is 2 or 2 raised to the power 1. For two forks, the number of possible destinations is 4, which is 2 times 2, or 2 raised to the power 2. 
For three forks, the number of possible destinations is 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 raised to the power 3. So the number of possible destinations is 2 raised to the power of the number of forks. If we represent the number of forks as the letter N, and if we represent the number of destinations as the letter M, then the number of destinations M equals 2 raised to the power N. If we take the log of both sides, then we find that the number of forks we have to navigate to reach one out of M destinations is the log of the number of destinations. Finally, if navigating each fork requires one bit, then we need N bits to navigate N forks. Each of the eight routes is defined by three instructions, a zero or a one, as shown at the end of each route. So each route can be represented with a binary number, each of which consists of three binary digits. For example, to get from A to D, you need to turn left, then right, and right again, which corresponds to a zero, a one, and another one and this sequence of three instructions is summarized by the binary number 011. Finally, let's summarize this presentation. Information is measured in bits. If you have n bits of information, then you can choose from m equals 2 to the power n equally probable alternatives. Equivalently, if you have to choose between m equally probable alternatives, then the amount of information you need, measured in bits, is equal to the log of the number of alternatives. This example was taken from Chapter 1 of Information Theory, a tutorial introduction. Chapter 1 of this book, plus computer code, can be downloaded from the book's website listed below. The book is available from Amazon as a hardback, paperback, and as an ebook.